Well, good morning, guys. I've got Totoro here with a little beauty dust, and uh, I'm still on the Javalia coffee uh, ever since my Bustello ran out and I wasn't able to replace it. Um, but uh, yeah. As you can tell from the uh, title and thumbnail of today's video, many of you have asked me if I would review the ever so popular Egyptian Magic Cream. Here, I'll just hold it up for you guys in case you're not familiar. Um, if you've never heard of this before, it you know is really popular among celebrities um, and it's popular in Europe, I believe. It uh, is kind of touted to, um, you know, make your skin look dewy and glowy. It doesn't, you know, it's claim people claim it doesn't break them out. So I was interested to check it out. Many of you asked me if I would review the ingredients, if I thought it was good, etc. So um, a little bit about this, um, if you're not familiar. This is a um, all-purpose skin cream. It's meant to be used as like a facial moisturizer, um, but you could also use it, you know, on your hands, around your cuticles, on your body, wherever. It contains olive oil, beeswax, propolis, um, royal jelly, and honey as well. And there are no like synthetic ingredients, so pe people who you know seek natural skincare, um, you know, kind of gravitate towards things like this and like it, and it gets good reviews. So I was interested to try it. Like you can pick this up um, from Walmart for I think I paid maybe eight bucks for this little jar, um, just to test it out. And this little jar, you guys, I mean, I, a little bit goes a long way. I'll just say that, okay? It um, is very unctuous in its texture, meaning ointment-like, as you can see here, um, and it kind of goes on like kind of just. Um, goes on like a thin um, film. It you would think when you put it on your fingertip that it's going to be almost like Vaseline, but it's actually not. It's, it it kind of melts a little bit more. And the reason I suspect for that is by virtue of the fact that this contains olive oil in it, um, which has these you know kind of long fluid tails. I mean, olive oil is a liquid at room temperature. Okay, so that makes sense that. It, you know, it, it, it heats up with the, your body temperature and kind of blends onto the skin uh, pretty nicely and is, is very softening. I use this product despite the fact that it looks like I haven't used very much of it. I promise I used it, used it for, you know, several nights, try it out and, and get a, an impression of it. And I can see why people like it, to be honest with you. It does, um, in fact, make the skin um, supple. It's an emollient, so it softens the skin. And by virtue of the fact that uh, the olive oil kind of nicely um, melts with the body temperature, I think it um, you know, kind of gives people a glowy look, if you will. And um, I can see why it's popular. This product, <clears throat> you know, I would put it on at nighttime. The reason I put mine on, I, I put this on at nighttime, is that um, I think these ingredients. I mean, you can see just in my fingertips. I don't know if you can see my fingertips touching the the label, the oils and things like that. They um, they tend to to rub off uh, e even the writing on the on the jar. So I was concerned that it would mess up my my sunscreen and interfere with the uh, the way the chemical sunscreens I sometimes use uh, set up and form a, a film. Um, so. I, I didn't use it during the day for that reason. Um, overall, I liked it. I used it at nighttime, and um, I will say this: um, while you know it did kind of give my skin this sort of luminous, dewy glow, I did find that um, the product kind of migrated a little bit um, as I, my body temperature increased at nighttime, um, and you know would kind of travel into my hair, so that when I woke up in the morning, there was a little bit of uh, kind of just a little bit of oily residual in my hair. I think it's the olive oil. You know, it's kind of like going to bed with olive oil on, on your face, and you know you might roll over and, and it may um, stain your linen. So, but personally, as a consumer, I did enjoy using it. I um, I can see why I can see the appeal. I didn't notice that kind of luminous glow, particularly when I first put it on. My thoughts were like, you know, this this seems like the kind of thing that if you're going, if you're like trying the no makeup thing and you're gonna go out at night on a date or something and you want to, you know, look at least a little bit put together, it kind of gives your skin like a 
like a no makeup makeup look almost it, it almost kind of gives your skin this kind of glowiness and it's all because of the emollient giving everything a, a nice uh, soft supple appearance so I think it, it will be well received by many of you um, if you use it and I I'm happy that you can get this tiny little jar to try out my experience with this small jar a little bit goes a long way so um, I, I think that it, its price point is actually somewhat reasonable. Let's just talk about the ingredients, however. Okay, so it has olive oil, beeswax, honey, uh, bee pollen royal jelly, and propolis, all right? So, um, you know, while this product is cruelty-free and all natural, it's obviously not bee vegan, um, as it's all bee-derived. So if you're a vegan for you know ethical reasons and you avoid um, bee-derived products, this would be one that you would wanna skip. It has no added fragrance, but I'll touch on that in a moment. So let's just talk about the ingredients, okay? So first and foremost, I'll just mention the olive oil on this. Olive oil, you guys, is um, you know liquid at room temperature. So um, it's nice as an emollient, as I said, in softening the skin, but it's not really a good moisturizing ingredient because it doesn't, um, it doesn't actually form a nice protective film on the skin that will, um, that will prevent transepidermal water loss, okay? Olive oil actually is quite popular as a moisturizer in, in newborn babies a lot of time in Europe. And they actually did some studies like, well, how good is this as a moisturizer, just straight up olive oil? And it turns out it's not, okay? Um, and so they took newborn babies in the nursery and they put like, um, olive oil on one one half of their about little you know one leg I suppose and um, just nothing on the other one and it turns out that doing nothing was better than putting the olive oil it turns out that putting the olive oil actually increased transepidermal water loss but if you just put olive oil on your face it's not very good as a moisturizer and in fact has been shown to, to um, exacerbate what's called transepidermal water loss or just basically evaporation of the water in your skin and one thing one reason that olive oil is always desired Desirable and something that people want to pursue is of course it's all natural but olive oil actually it does have a very high level of antioxidants antioxidants um, as I've mentioned in many of my videos can scavenge the free radicals that um, are you know generated in our skin by ultraviolet light um, that are the consequence of inflammatory reactions and age the skin However, one shortcoming of antioxidants in cream forms and, you know, when applied to the skin is that, you know, they, they lose their, their antioxidant capacity fairly quickly. And it's thought that these properties are best obtained when the antioxidant is ingested. So, you know, if you really want want to go pursuing the antioxidants in olive oil, it's probably better off that you're, you're cooking with it and consuming it than, than putting it on your face. Okay, so all, all, all in all, olive oil is, is not fantastic. Furthermore, there's a little yeast that lives on everyone's skin. He's not dangerous, okay? His name is Malassezia, or some people call him Pitterosporums. Um, it's a yeast. It's part of our normal skin biology, okay? This little yeast uh, contributes to seborrheic dermatitis. Um, he can also contribute to... Um, to rosacea, okay? And this little yeast thrives in, in oils and grows actually quite well in olive oil. So I suspect that individuals with rosacea, with uh, seborrheic dermatitis, or this kind of patchy, those dry, red, patchy, flaky areas on the skin, around the nose, forehead. Um, I have a seborrheic dermatitis video, if that sounds like you, FYI. I worry that this would be problematic for you by virtue of the olive oil. Um, in, in my skincare routine, it has a role as an oil-based cleanser. It's present in the Hot Lava Oil Cleanser that I use, and I think it works really well there, and then I wash it off, okay, so it doesn't stay on my skin. Um, so there's that. Let's talk about propolis, okay? Propolis is actually um, bee glue. It's this um, lipophilic or kind of fat-loving um, resinous substance that bees make, and they make it um, to seal the cracks in their hives and um, it's kind of like their, their cement, okay? And if you're a beekeeper, it's actually your enemy. I mean, beekeepers loathe propolis because they have to uh, get it off of the honeycombs. And it's this thick, resinous, sappy, sticky, goopy stuff that um, is just really arduous for them to remove as part of the processing of the honey and the maintenance of their, you know, bee colony is my understanding. So, um, you know, it's this really thick, resinous substance. And really, bees make it by um, obtaining 
um, certain molecules from the plants that they come in contact with and ingest. Um, that's how they're able to synthesize it and create this glue for their little hives. You know, um, the actual word propolis is Greek, you know, derived from Greek, and uh, pro meaning in front of, and polis meaning the city or, or community. So it kind of means like uh, in front of the community, almost like a barrier, if you will, okay? It's, and it serves as like a thermal insulator as well. And I suspect that the reason this is called Egyptian magic is that propolis has been used um, in medicine and skincare by humans since, you know, the, the times of Cleopatra, okay? Um, actually, they used to use uh, propolis when they mummified people um, as a preservative, okay? Um, propolis has a lot of um, bioactive molecules and constituents. It's not a pure substance, but it also has antibacterial properties, so it keeps the hive clean. Um, it also has antifungal properties, so, you know, it keeps, keeps fun, um, fungus away. Um, it's also a preservative, okay? And the molecules within propolis vary tremendously. Okay, there are hundreds of different biomolecules with you know activity, antibacterial, antifungal, um, antioxidant activity, and um, that profile varies tremendously. Um, it varies with where the bee, uh, you know, what temperate zone the bee. Uh, um, is living in it uh, because the flora and the plants that the bee is coming in contact with and is using to manufacture the propolis um, that varies quite a bit. It's been used by humans for thousands of years not only in cosmetics okay it's a very common ingredient in our cosmetics but it's also in a lot of um, medicaments or you know medications that are applied to the skin topically or orally or ingested. It's in a lot of lozenges it's pre frequently present in toothpaste, okay? And um, what else often has propolis? Propolis is often in a lot of um, nail varnishes and nail shellacs as well. It, um, it's in mouthwashes. I think I already said toothpaste. It is also a common food preservative, okay? For example, in Brazil, it's used as a food additive to pickle meats, okay? Um, and it also is used in a lot of wood varnishes, okay? So, you know, we, we, we're we copying the bee left and right here. Okay? One place where it's frequently found is on, on violins, okay? You know, that shiny stuff, so. And the way that it's processed, it's first washed with water and then it is uh, processed in 95% ethanol. And um, that uh, distills out all of the um, supposed bioactive constituents um, within the, the um, propolis um, and renders it, you know, something that we can actually use versus this, this hard, waxy, sticky sap stuff. It's really popular as an ingredient in Germany. It um, is useful for healing um, you know, it, it's been shown to be helpful in healing ulcers on the leg. Um, it's been used for burns, for psoriasis, for um, eczema. So a lot of different dermatologic conditions. Um, Egyptian magic has been shown, or sorry, propolis has been shown to be helpful, okay? Then the next ingredient I'll talk about is honey, which is in this. Honey I've talked about before, so I won't say too much about it. I have a video on honey and like masks and that kind of thing. Honey is actually a really fantastic ingredient in skincare, but um, it's high sugar content. Actually, it draws water out of bacteria and desiccates them, so it can really help, and it can help wound healing, and it's generally very well tolerated on the skin. So honey is actually a very good ingredient and, and one that um, it makes sense to put in here. Now, moving right along, after honey, royal jelly, let's just talk about that. Royal jelly is this viscous, watery substance that the bees um, secrete from um, their hypopharyngeal gland, I, I believe, and mandibular glands and, um, of the worker bee. And it is um, actually touted to be a superfood for the bees, okay? They use it to feed the queen, okay? So it's kind of like the ambrosia, if you will, of the hive, all right? And it's also fed to the, the hatching larvae um, so that, you know, they get um, nourishment. And there's actually a compound within the royal jelly called royal lactin that, that helps the um, larvae mature. And it's speculated that the royal lactin that um, they feed to the, um, the, the queen in uh, the royal jelly is actually uh, what's uh, proposed to be uh, the reason why uh, the queen has a much 
uh, greater lifespan than the worker bees, although I don't know, she's just sitting around snacking on royal jelly and probably, you know, focusing on me time. So she has a, uh, I, I don't know actually what, what the queen does, but I shouldn't speculate, but it has many pharmacologic activities, um, antibacterial, just like propolis, just like honey, and it's thought to help with allergies. And it's definitely anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory. So honey, royal jelly, and propolis are all bee-derived ingredients that are frequently found in, in a lot of um, medicines as well as skin care, okay? I've gone over the fact that they are, you know, pretty much all have antibacterial properties, um, anti-inflammatory properties. They have antioxidant capacity. There's good rationale for putting them in there. So what are the problems with, with those bee-derived ingredients? Well, <clears throat> First and foremost, if you are somebody who has a bee allergy, meaning you got stung by a bee one time and you either broke out in quote hives or God forbid you had um, swelling of like your throat, um, difficulty breathing. If you're somebody who has to carry an EpiPen in case you get stung by a bee, you don't, this is Russian roulette for you, okay? There can be a problem with using bee-derived skincare products in people with severe bee allergies, okay? You know, propolis, all of these things can cross-react. This also has bee pollen in it. Um, so, you know, there. this can cause a lot of problems. There have actually even been cases of, you know, severe flushing, facial swelling in people with existing allergies to, to bee stings, hymenoptera. And they, um, you know, run into real significant problems. So for sure, if you are somebody who has a, a real deal bee allergy, okay, bee sting allergy, I would say avoid this, okay? You know, the other people who should avoid these products um, that have propolis in them and, um, and royal jelly, okay? You know, this product, Egyptian Magic, is labeled as fragrance-free, okay? Like, no added fragrance. You know, sure, they didn't put any fragrance in. Guess who did? The bee, okay? Um, Royal Jelly and um, Propolis, you know, I mentioned they have tons of bioactive molecules in them that are all kind of influenced by the flower that the bee snacks on and then processes either in its spit or, you know, in its gut to make the wax. Um, and guess what guys those bioactive molecules are some of the same exact molecules that are present in fragrance okay things like cinnamic acids and aldehydes that are present in fragrance so if you are somebody with a true fragrance allergy um, or that you're sensitive to fragrance i would say don't be fooled into thinking that this will not be problematic for you it's actually very likely to be problematic for you this is not technically a fragrance-free product in the sense that it's going to be safe for you. Particularly given the fact that this product also has the olive oil in it, and as I said, olive oil actually worsened skin barrier function. So in the setting of impaired skin, uh, an impaired skin barrier by virtue of the olive oil and uh, you know the propolis in there, it is set up for irritation and, and problems, okay? And then the other, so, and you know, how common is allergic contact dermatitis or rashes developing to propolis? It's actually very common, okay? And it was first reported in 1915 that people, while, while this is a good ingredient and has a lot of logical sense, we put it in everything and the body was like, hey, I am not a bee, get this off of me, okay? And so as early as 1915, people started developing allergies to propolis um, and really bad skin rashes as a result of using propolis either in, in skin products or in lozenges. There's case reports and many, many, many reports of problems around the lips, dry lips, you know, achelitis, swelling of the tongue from, you know, sucking on lozenges that have propolis or using toothpaste that have propolis. So it is not, it's not entirely safe, okay? As I've said on here before, all things that are natural are not safe and or effective. Well, propolis could be effective for sure. It's got some good ingredients, some good constituents, but it, it's not necessarily safe, okay? So be aware of that. Don't go into this, you know, patting yourself on your on the back because it's an all natural product and you know it's going to be safe and clean and all that stuff this can be problematic okay for sure and as we continue to put this in all of our pro skincare products med medications as it's as its presence in our world increases okay i mean it's on 
violins, everything, okay? The likelihood of us developing allergies to it has increased tremendously, okay? So, um, so in summary, what do I think of this product? I think it's really, really nice. I enjoyed it as a consumer. I can see the appeal. I definitely um, appreciate the luminosity it imparts to the skin. I definitely can see how you would enjoy this product right before you go out at night if you don't want to put on a full face of makeup. Um, and uh, I think it's, it's really nice. I enjoyed it. It did not cause any problems for me. It didn't cause any breakouts you know, clogging pores, greasy, shiny spots, itchy spots, redness, irritation, nothing like that. Didn't dry out my lips, I put it on my lips. I tried this product actually um, as an oil-based cleanser to try and remove my makeup first. And it does remove makeup pretty well, but um, I don't think it performs particularly well as an oil-based cleanser, FYI, just because it's kind of hard to spread around, probably because probably because propolis is a little thick and, and resinous, okay, and unctuous. But people I think will not do well with this are, you know, the people with a bee allergy for sure, that could be problematic. People with pre-existing fragrance allergy, people with sensitive skin, people with eczema may have problems with this, okay? Because while some of the ingredients can help heal the skin barrier, uh, the olive oil in here kind of kind of kind of negates that, okay? As I said, it, it, olive oil on the skin actually can impair the skin barrier um, when left on the skin. So I think people with eczema may not be served too, too well by this, particularly if you've got eczema on the face, okay? Um, and <clears throat> people with seborrheic dermatitis um, on the face, I think will also potentially run into problems by virtue of the olive oil in this. People with uh, rosacea, um, I think this could also be problematic for you. If you've got just normal skin, um, you may do quite well with this, okay? Um, the, the longer you use it, the more likely you are to develop an allergy to the propolis, okay? Um, and so be aware of that. But I can see the appeal here. It's not expensive. I would say one of the things that I like most about it is that uh, you can get this tiny little jar and try it out, you know, see how you do with it, see what you think of it. I mean, it's been around since Cleopatra's time, so... It, you know, it, it, there's got to be something to it, and I appreciated that and using it as a consumer, but I do know that there are risks associated with using something like that by virtue of the things that I mentioned here. So, But anyways, guys, I, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.